Welcome to the Black Minds News. This is your host, the Whiteologist, Mr. Blows Your Minds. Coming with today's show, July 19, 2019. And what's on the menu today? Did you hear? But you know I'm not going to do that because I got to tell you as I get to it. So, first and foremost, I want to say what's good to my subscribers. If you haven't come by, welcome again to the most hated show on the Black on the Internet. And uh, pass it by if you should just happen to pass by. And found this show, the most hidden, tucked, stuck in the corner show that you'll find on the internet. Just look at the views. Look how many years I've been doing this. You balance it out. You tell me. Having 300,000 videos, 50,000, 40,000, 60,000, now I can't get past 50 views. You tell me if I'm not the most impressed to show in the corner. Again, this is Black Minds News, and our channel is to report, articulate, transmit. I guess you can say we also bring news. We bring the insight, right? We get it from websites, quotes from publications, news media, wherever we can find it. First and foremost, we give honor to the creator because why? The truth don't need no partner. As a descendant of the greatest people who created this land that you call the United States, we, the B-A-D-O-S, that's Black American Descendant of Slave. Some say Black African Descendant of Slave. Others say American Descendant of Slave. We, as a historical lineage to our ancestors who built this nation, we, the children and descendants, give honor to our ancestors. You know what my model of this show is? I'm never going to tell you what I heard. I'm only going to tell you what I know. Stay tuned for this show's broadcast. All right, here we go. Now they have a little technical difficulties on that. So we're going to get it all straightened out and squared away. First and foremost, what's good, everybody? Hey, hey, hey. This is Black Minds News. Again, this is July 19, 2019. And this story I'm about to cover here, for those who have been with me for some time, we covered this story, right? I think I was one of the only channels in the black corner of the Internet that stayed on this topic all the way from when it originated, when it first broke, the, the just the atrocity of the killing of Laquan McDonald being shot 16 times, right? And then it went through the whole process of that trial and how it kind of turned and then ended up getting what people would perceive as justice. Then there was another aspect to the case that said the people who were there that night and the discrepancy in their stories, right? And so that has taken this process and many dips and turns have taken. It's like you can have a situation here and then you got another situation over here. Now, I'm not understanding, but today or actually last night, I was going to break the story last night, but I decided to just wait till today to do it. And so I seen this and I want to present this to you because, again, some of you may have forgotten. Right. And, uh, you know, we covered this story. So let me show it to you and then I'll come back after the fact of that. So check this out and be right back. We want to get you some breaking news. A judge has announced the verdict in the trial of three Chicago cops who were charged with trying to cover up the controversial shooting of Laquan McDonald. This was in 2014. I want to play this for you. This court finds that the state has failed to meet its burden on all charges 
Therefore, there is a finding of not guilty as to every count and each defendant of conspiracy, official misconduct, and obstruction of justice. Good day, Your Honor. Defendants are discharged. All three police officers accused of covering up the shooting have been acquitted in the, the, the case of Laquan McDonald, uh, a young man who was shot and many people uh, were concerned about a cover-up. We're going to continue to monitor this story. We'll have much more to follow. Breaking right now, four Chicago police officers fired tonight, accused of a cover-up in the Laquan McDonald case. CBS 2's Charlie DeMar is live at police headquarters. Charlie. Brad and Erica, good evening. And tonight's decision to fire those officers for falsifying statements and ultimately covering for former Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke comes nearly five years since the shooting death of Laquan McDonald. Is there a motion to find police officer Daphne Sebastian guilty of violating rules 2, 3, 6, and 11 and to discharge her from the police department? The discipline against these officers resting heavily on the dash cam video that was released in 2015. The same video that showed the shooting death of Laquan McDonald. He was shot in the back 16 times and the surveillance ultimately led to the murder conviction of officer Jason Van Dyke. Sergeant Stephen Franco accused of signing off on the false or exaggerated statements made by officers Janet Mondragon, Ricardo Viramontes, and Daphne Sebastian. They're accused of covering up for Officer Van Dyke in effort to protect him. The officers are accused of embellishing how Laquan McDonald was still a threat, even though he was already shot. Tonight, several people spoke on the terminated officer's behalf, including their union. Because officers understand that by your ruling, an officer can be fired or indicted merely responding to a job. So tonight's police board's ruling is immediate, but we are told that this decision can be appealed in court. Reporting live tonight from Chicago Police Headquarters, Charlie DeMar, CBS 2 News. All right. There must be some things going on here. They don't want me to do this story, huh? We're going to do it anyway, right? So, again, you had the two parts there. There was the original one when they got acquitted when they went before the judge, right? And the trial about, you know, the so-called cover-up of falsification of documents, right? And it was that, you know, they had went and found a judge, I think the judge's name was Dominica Stevenson, right? And uh, according to her ruling, she endorsed the actions of the police of the night that McDonald was shot by Officer Jason Van Dyke, or former Officer Van Dyke, right? And uh, according that they were saying that the 17-year-old was erratic, armed assailant, he ignored commands to drop the knife, and... Uh, she said it would be wrong to second guess the actions of the police, right? I said the actions that they took that night. Now, again, only one officer took the action, right? It's kind of funny how when we have seen several stories where an individual was asleep in a Taco Bell and every gun was drawn, but everybody shot, right? Everybody was shooting, not just the one that was right up upon the brother it was all police there so it's kind of funny how in that situation that all police are fired only just one felt like it was a threat and yet once you've seen how uh, Laquan was kind of veering off to the right while they was on his left and then to say what they said I don't understand how you said that we that, that she said that uh, it would be wrong to second guess the actions of the police and so it said that it was clear from the testimony in the case that an officer could reasonably believe an attack was imminent based on McDonald's actions. What? Really? That it was reasonably to believe that attack was imminent. How was that possible when everybody, again, the all CNI was there? Based on what you see, how could somebody even say that? But see, again, making the square peg fit in the round hole 
for your own justification, right? It's good to lock we up, but when it comes to other people, it seems like there's always figure out some way to be more compassionate. And, you know, that's just what they were saying. Now, this again, this is the original trial that they had. And the reason why I'm telling you this first is because there's a reason you have to hear this. And so they said, we cannot now view the actions of the officers with the benefit of hindsight as to what should have been believed, right? So they're trying to say, well, what they were in the time of when it was action and was happening versus on what they believe. Well, they have two different things, but again, they just, maybe they just, you know, when they went back and re recollected, it was different. It's just, that's just lying, right? It's straight out lying when you say that, right? And so, you know, in acquitting, right, the retired detective David March and ex-patrolman uh, Joseph Walsh and Officer Thomas Gaffney of conspiracy, official misconduct and obstruction of justice, Stevenson rejected the prosecution case with a witness-by-witness -witness takedown, right? And so what you end up seeing is that based on that court there and that proceeding in that original trial, they were acquitted, and that would have been for criminal, right? Again, falsifying documents in itself is a crime, right? Fabricating an incident to collaborate, we understand you're trying to protect your boy, but the video showed there's a contradiction between what you said and what y'all wrote and what was actually done. How is this in itself? in a criminal court based on the policies and you know laws that they're supposed to be abiding by how was this not a crime right so it said according as you heard in the video it said that the state could not find this uh the burden was falling on the state and the state could not convict because it did not have sufficient evidence i don't know what else you needed documentation that somebody wrote in collaboration. And one of the officers, the woman that was there, actually said that didn't happen. But they threw her in there because, again, they weren't going to have her a police officer after she did what she did, right? So she didn't actually collaborate. She was actually in opposition to what they said. But they going down, they said she going too, right? And so we end up happening now. So then they end up going through the uh, board review, right? They take it there, right? So let me tell you about this situation, right? So now they're talking about how the four Chicago cops, now it's four. Now originally, it was only three, right? Somehow they picked the four because, again, they brought in the woman, right? The woman ended up getting into the case, and I'll tell you her name, right? And so, uh, again, what they said that night, it said the board had voted unanimous, uh, unanimously to fire Officer Ricardo Riamontes, Janet Mondragon, or Madragon. I think she is the one that, when I remember when I was doing this case, she was the one that said in opposition. She said what they said. She said in total, you know, opposition to them, right? You had Sergeant Stephen Franco, right? And you had uh, Daphne Sebastian. Uh, I think, wait, man, if I'm not mistaken, I think Daphne Sebastian uh, bringing discredit to the department and preventing the department from achieving this goal. So it was Daphne Sebastian and not uh, Janet Madragon, right, that stated in opposition. And so what we see is that the review board seemed to determine that based on the video that was displayed in the second part, that that was sufficient enough to find them guilty of the charges that now this board, independent from the justice system, seemed to convict them and say guilty to want them to be terminated, right? But there's a kick in the head, right? Let's just let me show you how this game, this chess game, how they constantly playing with us. Because again, they want to tell you, oh, guilty. So they're going to use that to encompass your understanding and saying fired, but there's still the process isn't done, right? So think about how this is going to go full circle back to originally. This is Look how this game is played. So again, if I showed you that originally they was in court 
and the court could not determine that the proof burden of the state could not prove his case, right? So then you have a police review board who end up determining based on what they seen and the evidence that was sufficient for them to warrant them to say they should be fired. But again, there is another process because they get to appeal it. And the appeal, according to what the article talks about, says that they had to go to court. Do you see this? Huh? Do you see what this is? So you're going to take it back to the court who again going to tell you the same thing you told you the last time. If they couldn't convict them on that, they're not going to convict them on this. So again, this is just kind of cannon fodder to be to the public to make it appear that look, judiciously, look, we we will reprimand and, and fire, but will they be fired? When it's all said and done after this appeal itself, will they uphold what it seems that the independent review board seem to come up and again because a lot of that is a lot of people that look like Laquan McDonald. So they have a different understanding and way to look at the facts than, let's say, the judicial system that might be some things that might be, you know, the wizard behind the eyes might be, you know, orchestrating that somehow that things don't come out the way it should have. Because it look, I mean, it's clear cut and day. If, okay, one person signing off. That means if he's signing off, and then that means the ones who wrote it, right? So, okay, if you want to be leaning to the person who signed off and then said, well, maybe he didn't read, even though that's what your job, you know, that is the, you know, the job duties that is entitled to your position. But those who wrote outwardly and said that, but then for the system to say, well, we're not to question them based on, it was obvious what we seen. See, the thing is, don't believe your lying eyes. The video is not going to tell you what you've seen. We're going to tell you what it is, not what the video showed you. Only when it's convenient, when it's in a favor on our position, then believe the video. But don't believe the video when we see what you see and then, according to what they wrote, didn't match. So again, as Johnny Cochran would have said, if it don't fit, you must have quit, Right? But you know the reason why this all take place, right? Let's, let's, let's keep it out. Again, as I, those who might have seen uh, the article that I did about the Eric Garner situation, about how they just exonerated Pantatelio, right, for no federal charges, right, due to the simple fact that why the family had already took the money, right? The money is exchanged for keeping the reputation of the department. We paid you out. So they allow us now to go ahead and to make everything copacetic in the way that we keep the integrity, even though what integrity is it when, you know, as a civilian, if I'm caught in those situations, you understand, either I'm going to be held to every letter of the law or I'm going to be acquitted because there's not enough factual evidence. But again, that's just how it goes. And we... Just have to keep looking at this. And again, he's going to keep promoting it. But again, you got to see the trick in the game. The trick is we're going to make you say, see, guilty. Fine by the review board. But then in the process, they're still going to go back to the court. And they originally went to the court prior before going to the uh, review board. And so I don't see how the court is going to overturn what they originally did. Because they're going to have the same evidence that was presented in that case. What's going to be any different than that the review board had? So again, just going in circles. It is what it is. But I'm just going to report it again. This is Black Minds News. I'm your host, the, the white artist, Mr. Blows Your Mind. And uh, again, this is how it is. Till the next show, y'all. Stay black, love, and all that good stuff. Because, um, you know, some difficult days are coming. You know what I mean? Uh, it's gearing up. And we can see the tension and the heightness of everything. And it's a lot to do with what's coming, y'all. Don't y'all know? Next month. Right. Next month brings what? Right. Next month is the 400 years. You don't think that that's burdening on the white psyche. Why do you think that's the, oh, talking about the squad? They got, you know, the, the, the Muslims, uh, the African-American. Uh, they got a, a Hispanic person. And you know what I'm saying? Think about Trump and what he said. So all this is the diversion, again, not to focus on. 
the 400 years. Keep that in mind. Everything that you're seeing now is a diversion tactic to keep your mind off of and so that the country don't have to recognize it because this is what's permeate the people. Again, I got many shows I'm going to show today that's just going to show you what is going on in these people that they're just constantly just doing things. It's because it's dawning on them. This 400 years and whatever insanity they got in their mind thinking about what that really entails and what does that mean and what is that going to in and you know induce in us right so again stay tuned for the next shows until then peace love and all that portions of the following program may be unsuitable for younger or more sensitive viewers viewer discretion is advised Remember, the enemy has only images and illusions behind which he hides his true motives. Destroy the image and you will break the enemy. I'm here to tell you tonight that the businessmen, the mayor of this city, the police commissioner of this city, and everybody in the white power structure of this city must take a responsibility for everything. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Luther and I and everyone in this arena tonight are unified by the same great American values. We're proud of our country. We respect our flag. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag? To say, get that son of a off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired! Race is when you use your power and influence to subject people into inferiority. Utterances can't be racist. Look around you, man. They own this shit. They own this couch you sitting on. Them shoes you got on your feet. This building. This school. This country. You. We're behind enemy lines, dog. So you must first of all remember that this system was not originally designed with black people in mind. Right on! And it definitely was not prepared for black people to in the end begin to demand their rights and an equal share in this country which they died for. Right on! Hey, and we definitely are not going back to Africa. In the church, we used to sing the song, Good News, the Chariot is Coming. While you sit here today, knowing that you have come to hear good news, you must realize in advance what good news for you might be bad news for somebody else. Right. What good news for the sheep might be bad news to the world. They say, oh, things are getting so much better for you. In 1849, it was hitting blacks on the head 100 times a day. In 1990, they hit them 48 times a day. Isn't it better? Oh, it's got to be better. You're, you're, you're saying 52 below. The only purpose of most black Americans on Earth today is to destroy. I think that's noble. The Italians love Italians. What Irish love Irish. But when a nigga loves a nigga, it's an unpardonable sin. They, are, they have blood in their hands. When we say they have blood in their hands, we are not saying... Him, George Bezos, went and killed. But white people colonized us. They dispersed us. They enslaved our people. They sucked our economy dry. They are still sucking it dry even today. That's white people. Tony Blair, George Bush, Napoleon Bonaparte, Leopold, Adolf Hitler, Benjamin Netanyahu, all white people, they are the same. They are racist and they are full of hate. I've been waiting for you. You have many questions, and though the process has altered your consciousness, you remain irrevocably human. Ergo, some of my answers you will understand, and some of them you will not. Concordantly, while your first question may be the most pertinent, 
you may or may not realize it is also the most irrelevant. Why am I here? Our world is coming crumbling down. The coons are coming. You have to understand that white America has an uncanny way of making the victim the victimizer. Excuse me, master, for putting my head in the way of your club. Not that your club is brutalizing my head and putting hickeys on it. My head got in the way of your free swing and broke your shiny stick, and I want to apologize for that. Your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the Matrix. You are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision. While it remains a burden assiduously avoided, it is not unexpected and thus not beyond a measure of control, which has led you inexorably here. There are more connections in the human body than there are stars in the galaxy. We possess a gigantic network of information to which we have almost no access. Matrix is older than you know. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. Five months before. Three, four. There's only two possible explanations. There were five months before. Either no one told me. Where no one knows. Precisely. As you are undoubtedly gathering, the anomaly is systemic, creating fluctuations in even the most simplistic equations. You control me! I'm gonna smash you to fucking death! Yeah! 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 You, you, you can't make me do anything yeah! like Chris! Choice. The problem is choice. Let us remember that we are not brutalized because we're Baptists. We're not brutalized because we're Methodists. We're not brutalized because we're Muslims. We're not brutalized because we're Catholics. We're brutalized because we are black people in America. Because white people made him to be what he is. They made him to look evil because that's their role, to make all of us black people to look evil and to hate ourselves. I can't hate you. You're a nigger till you die. If you're a poor nigger, you're a poor nigger. If you're a rich nigger, you're a rich nigger. But you never stop being a nigger. And if you get to be educated, you're just an educated nigger. Well, I'm told every day I'm on air that I'm racist because I call out racism. That is maddening to me, and I'm crying about it because it's crazy. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching you and I and trying to tell the white man to get this powder keg out of his house. Let the black man separate from his house. Let the black man have his own house. Let the black man have his own land and his own property. I thought the bitch was white! Damn it! I thought the bitch was white! That's true. I think that white people are so guilty uh, knowing what they've done to black people, uh, that they feel if the uh, deeds were reversed, they would re they would hate the black man if he had done the same thing to them. So it's actually, uh, it reflects a guilt complex on the part of whites when they r ask us, do we hate them? Uh, and if you notice, Uncle Sam has formed a habit of going all over the world. Uh, he calls it the ugly American or the American image. He thinks that everybody hates him because it's a guilt complex. And uh, if he, you know, if you think that if you uh, are worried about Europeans hating you, and they're your allies and your cousins. Well, naturally, it would uh, follow for you to think that Negroes in this country would hate you, uh, especially in light of what has been done to black people in this country by white people. We now, check it out. The white ball dominates everything, right? It knocks the shit out of the yellow ball, the red ball, right? And the game's over when the white ball drives the black ball completely off the table. But you have to see that all of this is hypocrisy. I love Malcolm. Malcolm called me the Sunday that he died. I was working Basin Street East. He said, Brother Greg, you, 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 you coming by today. And I said, Malcolm, I love you. And I said, I love you so much. I don't even want to take a chance to be there. He said, what do you mean, Brother Greg? I said, well, I closed tonight, Sunday night in Basin Street East. And I said, but I had my wife book me a flight into Chicago at 8 o'clock this morning. And I'm going to Chicago, and I had uh, way beneath my salary booked me into a college about 
10 miles from the airport. I'm going to go there and speak this afternoon, and I'm going to stay there until they tell me you did. Because I'm not going to let this government get two of us for the price of one. And I'm going to call Adam Clayton Powell when I finish talking to you and beg him not to come there. Because today, the United States government is going to get you.